hi folks for those who are just coming in we're just waiting another minute or two to get started the webinar will start at 2 p.m eastern time so we're just giving people a couple more minutes to get a, get logged in and then we'll go ahead and get started in the meantime if you want to say hi in the chat feel free let us know who you are where you're listening from we'll get started in just another minute or so appreciate you signing on early All right, Bob. Well, it says it's about two o'clock on my clock. Do we want to go ahead and should I start with introductions? And I think we should. It's two, yeah, it's two o'clock in my world also. So let's get started. And right. thanks everybody for joining. All right. Well, thank you. Hello and good afternoon or good morning to you wherever you are listening from. My name is Paula Gonzalez and I am the Senior Manager of Membership Growth uh, for AAPA. Welcome to AAPA's fourth member hosted webinar of 2021. Since our members have been unable to meet face to face for the past year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, AAPA has been working to bring you content, news, information, education, and opportunities to connect throughout the year through virtual programs such as this one. And since we have not been able to meet in person, we have added a new benefit for new members this past year to allow them to hold a webinar to present themselves to our members and to showcase their expertise and their thought leadership. So we are very excited to hear what um, this new member, Nearshore Networks, has to share with us today. If you are listening today and you are not a member and you would like an opportunity to present a webinar uh, as a new member, as well as other opportunities to get in front of and build relationships with our port members. I will be sharing my contact information at the end of this presentation. And we have lots of exciting programs planned for 2021, and we are planning to resume in-person events in just a few months. So if you're keen to learn about additional opportunities to connect and learn, please hang around for just a few minutes following the conclusion of this presentation, as I will be happy to share with you some additional ways that you can engage learn and network in 2021 through AAPA. So now we'll go ahead and get started. I am pleased to welcome one of our newer members and the presenters of today's uh, webinar, Nearshore Networks. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Bob Miltenberger to introduce himself and his panel of speakers. Bob, the floor is yours. Thank you, Paula. Very happy to be here in front of the membership today. And those that aren't members, I really endorse Paula's uh, uh, invitation to join. We're quite proud of uh, Nearshore Networks joining AAPA. Uh, we're committed to bring innovation and useful solutions to both ports and fleets around the world. We have communication services and provide services to many vessels that frequent the ports. Uh, in fact, several of those that are present here today, uh, we've got vessels that are in and out of your facilities frequently. Uh, so we're familiar with that. We felt the uh, need to bring content and good information to both our fleet operators as well as our friends at the ports. And this is just a very, very good example of uh, a tool that we've found to be very useful and have been affected by. And what the topic is today, of course, is weather. So 
our goal, as I said, is for this to be a discussion to help you all self-explore what you've been doing and how that might be changed for the better in the future with regards to weather. Nearshore networks crews are affected by that when we arrive to do service at ports or whenever we have vessels that arrive. I'll just give you a quick uh, little background on uh, what we're going to speak through today. The topics overview we'll cover and then I'll do some guest introductions uh, for Chris McDonald from tomorrow and Bill Hamlin of the Gray Wolf Group. We'll have our core discussion and then a Q&A and then a wrap up. We'll do a follow up with each of you, invite your uh, thoughtful response to a four question survey that we're going to provide just to find out what keener points of weather affect your, your facilities and what your folks have to deal with. Uh, that'll be very helpful as we work with ports around the world, getting more sensitive to the specific needs. Uh, Nearshore Networks, I started this in 2016. We are actually a global maritime solutions provider and our forte is rapid response on site and uh, remedying issues for vessels and specifically in the area of communications for satellite and cellular. So you may have seen some of my team members uh, coming through your facilities before. We're headquartered in Houston, Texas. We've got operations in Brazil, UK, Spain, and Netherlands. And we also have a number of uh, port facilities around the world where our VSAT and cellular specialists operate in country to bring in a global uh, a global expertise on a local level. So that's where we're at uh, from a nearshore network standpoint. Let me do our introductions today and then we'll get right to our folks that want to host and share some informational content with you. Uh, we're happy to host Chris McDonald who's the Enterprise Director with Tomorrow.io. And Tomorrow's a global weather management solution. And they came to our attention as we were looking for various weather solutions uh, for our folks to be able to be sensitive to their uh, comings and goings in support of our client base. Uh, we discovered, as I think you all know, that really weather solutions haven't changed much over the uh, near-term past, and while we can do forecasting uh, with a what we all thought was a reasonable accuracy level, I think you'll find in today's discussion that the folks at Tomorrow have uh, have really honed this to an art. And for us at Nearshore Networks, uh, as we'll bring out in the discussion later, it isn't so much prediction of the weather, but predicting when it might pass so that we can get back to work and to task. Uh, but I'll leave that to Chris to further elaborate on. We uh, also have a super special guest, Bill Hamlin, who's a maritime veteran with both offshore and onshore experience when it comes to port and fleet operations. Uh, if you've read Bill's bio, you'll know that he's a former executive with uh, the United States Lines, Sea Land, American President Lines, and Horizon Lines. He served at uh, a variety of executive levels in fleet operations a new build at Norwegian Cruise Line. And on the container shipping side, Bill had a variety of operating positions in both line and staff. So he's been an individual who's seen it from dockside all the way to the executive suite. So I think he brings a, a real world uh, commentary to weather. And he's very familiar with how tomorrow.io uh, has, has, has had positive impacts uh, on a number of clients. He's operated on the West Coast ports out of Los Angeles, Oakland, Seattle, Tacoma, and Dodge Harbor for, uh, for APL as president of their uh, operating company, Eagle Marine. And most recently, Bill was COO uh, of an intermodal and container yard operation called ITS Con Global. He had over 85 facilities in North America, Mexico, and Costa Rica, so certainly understands the integrated community that we operate in uh, when we talk about ports. It's far from being, as you know, just a standalone dock. Uh, you have a whole community, some larger, some smaller, but certainly everyone plays in and out of that space. Uh, to wrap up before uh, we uh, invite Chris to kick off our conversation, I wanna remind you we'll have a four question survey 
about how your port looks at weather resources. I'll mail it uh, from my personal email at, at Near Shore Networks to everyone as a follow-up. Uh, and we're going to uh, give a little incentive to your replying so we gain more weather concern intel by offering a free pass to the AAPA conference in Austin, Texas in September. We look forward to having an opportunity to speak with anyone there that has an interest for further follow-up. And so with that, I'm going to see if we can't kick this back over to a live activity and welcome everyone. So I hope Bill, Chris, you guys can see my screen. I hope everyone else can as well. Absolutely. Good. All right. Well, welcome, gentlemen. Chris, why don't you start us off today and introduce everyone to tomorrow and uh, the great mission you guys are on. And uh, we want to hear about tomorrow's approach to weather and uh, what you can do for the fleets and ports today, sir. Sounds good. Um, well, Bob, first and foremost, thanks so much for giving tomorrow the opportunity to speak today. I'm looking forward to this discussion with yourself and Bill. Uh, to give everyone a kind of a little bit of a, you know, quick who is tomorrow.io, I think it makes sense to start with our mission, right? So first, our mission is to really help countries, businesses, and individuals better manage the ever-growing environmental related challenges. I think we can all admit these days, if you're in the maritime industry, um, events seem to be happening a lot more frequently. Uh, you know, really, how can we prepare for this? So some of the things that you know i think is important as we've evolved as a company in the past five or six years is you know what we've keep seeing these days is there's a greater need more risk occurring these days and so really we really want to be that weather intelligence right we believe it's a new cybersecurity for the c-suite um you can certainly run your businesses these days uh without weather intelligence uh but you know there's a big risk there, right? Perhaps it's losing tens of thousands of dollars per week. And, you know, and then we've all seen these unfortunate events that have happened in the past couple of months. Um, you know, if we want to take a, one of those big catastrophes that really impacted the supply chain globally, which is near and dear to, I think, a lot of the folks on today's um, meeting is, you know, the Suez Canal, right? We know the, the losses were in the billions of dollars a day. Um, you know, how can we get ahead of this? How can we be better prepared? Um, and, you know, as we're learning, these executives at these at the highest levels are really being held accountable, right, um, for the climate resiliency strategy or lack of, right? We've done some research over here at tomorrow.io and really, um, you know, what we've learned is there's not, not everyone's prepared, right? And these are going to cost people, um, you know, the safety of their employees, which I think we can all admit is the number one. For all of us on the port operations in the maritime industry is making sure everyone's safe. Um, but you know, when the disasters strike, um, you know, take the air caught example, right? And the executive level, not, not only do millions of people lose power, but the CEO end up losing his job, right? So this is something that the whole weather intelligence we want to bring to the table, we want to get this awareness um, and really across the industry. Uh, and you know these events as they continue to happen more and more regularly, how can we be prepared as an organization, as a community, right? I think, Bob, one of the things that we've talked a lot about is how well intertwined in the community around the port is in the maritime industry in general, right? So um, certainly there's a lot of jobs at stake. Um, the company's growth trajectories are at risk. Uh, and not to mention, you know, the safety, right? And the efficiency of operations, uh, within the technology sector and, and obviously in the supply chain. So uh, what we've learned is, you know, the leaders are able to optimize their businesses by leveraging tomorrow.io, um, adapting to these climate changes and really giving them a competitive advantage globally, making sure, you know, if it's a monsoon in Asia that's happening or potentially a mudslide in South America. Uh, so businesses know that this impact of these events are occurring more and more. Um, and it's really, the thing that we can bring to the table at tomorrow.io is being that weather intelligence platform to help make you sure you guys are prepared for those challenges. Um, a lot of you know people might say, you know, what what makes you different? Um, it's a great question. Uh, first and foremost, we're a technology company, right? So we're the only weather intelligence platform out there. 
Um, we're allowing our customers um, through working in collaboration with them, you know, providing them predictive business insights, right? So, uh, and actionable recommendations. I think um, Bill's going to get into this a little bit more down the topic, but everyone on a port or in the maritime has certain operational procedures they got to take. Um, and how do we actually take that and when weather impacts that, put that into some real life use cases, giving them the actions and the confidence to make those decisions. Um, obviously, there's a lot of money at stake with those decisions, realizing it can impact thousands of people on a port. Um, but, you know, we have that deep proprietary technology, sensing and modeling. Um, it's actually soon going to be powered by our space uh, initiative that we're launching next year. And that's really to provide global coverage, right? We, we're certainly aware that there's um, when weather impacts everyone differently, but there's also weather coverage um, in different areas of the world is, is, is really not up to par. So that's something that we're looking to change on a global scale. Uh, and, and, you know, we are multi-vertical over here at tomorrow.io. Um, being the director of global supply chain solutions, the port maritime industry is near and dear to me. Um, but, you know, we do kind of go cross-vertical uh, working with organizations such as the NFL, um, the large air, airline carriers, right, aviation the Uber, the technology companies of the world, uh, the Fords, the Deltas, uh, and really because we're a software company, right? We're, we're pushing that technology, pushing that envelope. Um, and that's why I'm really excited to, you know, have this opportunity to speak with Bob and Bill today because um, the porch is something that's certainly near and dear to us, right? So the first and foremost, um, just a couple of areas that we continually listen and hear from our customers around the ports is, you know, Safety is number one priority, right? Let's make sure if we have workers in the yard that they're being um, taken care of. Um, optimizing labor scheduling, right? I think Bill's gonna touch upon this a little bit, but is there ideal times? We know we wanna keep the port operational. Um, the last thing we wanna do is stop any of the throughput going through. Um, but you know, how do we get ahead of that, making sure that we can you know, schedule accordingly, making sure that those ideal conditions are met for our workers out there. Um, mitigate financial exposure. Again, there's a lot of risk going on with more and more of these activities coming on uh, with these weather events impacting the maritime industry and ports in particular. Um, so how do we expand our safety measures, right, to avoid those injuries? We certainly know there's some costly um, claims and hazard pay being put out there. Um, so is there a way we can get ahead and keep our people safe to avoid those situations? Um, you know, uh, and one of the big things that we learned and from a number of ports that we're working with is, you know, those port operation manuals, right? How do we actually churn those into business insights? Uh, we're gonna talk you know, about today through our business insights, really taking the actions and the logics that you guys have built up over the years uh, and providing that in a dashboard. That's something that tomorrow.io does. So certainly welcome any of the conversations around that. And then obviously, finally, you know, we're software as a service, we're a technology first company. Bob, as, as we've worked together and, and as Bill's familiar with us is, uh, you know, being able to provide that dashboard, right, and a learning system to make sure that everyone um, is up to date and then improve a collaboration amongst the ports. So yeah. that's just a quick little bit about tomorrow.io. Um, yeah. Bob, looking forward to this conversation. And, and with that, Bill, I'd love to hand it over to you. Great. Thanks, Chris. And thanks, uh, Bob, as well. I, I want to make a few comments today from an operator's perspective. In, in my career in maritime intermodal port operations and crews, I've certainly seen and experienced firsthand how weather events can impact the business as well as the bottom line. And some of my comments will uh, reiterate what you've said, Chris, from, from your perspective at, at tomorrow. And, and as you said, I've had an opportunity to work directly with tomorrow and your platform with, uh, with one major operator across a number of locations. And that's been very successful in terms of improving the, not just the awareness on weather, but the uh, connectivity between that awareness and action. You know, you talked about the, the weather playbook. Um, you know, a number of locations may sort of have something in the background that they used when weather is coming, certainly with ports being prepared for hurricanes and so forth, but it gets more granular than that. And as we see right now, um, the, you know, weather is a critical component of operational planning and execution. I think we see this week 
how severe weather in the southeast has caused damage and disruption to business and the supply chain, and the insurance companies are uh, not real happy yet either. So, you know, to me, severe weather events impact operational efficiencies, personnel planning, equipment assets, and facilities. And I'll touch a little bit on that, but that gets into the complexity of turning data to information and information to action and what that action really means. You know, having awareness of impending weather events can help with appropriate operational planning to protect personnel and also not hire and have people on the payroll when they can't work. Um, obviously, sometimes you have labor agreements which um, force you to pay people when they're not working, but there's other flexibilities that allow you to defer when labor comes in or accelerate labor to be able to work around certain weather events. Um, to me, the safety of personnel and protecting our assets is not just good business, it's, it's the right thing to do. Uh, nobody wants anyone to get hurt. And you know, not knowing when hail may be coming, not knowing when lightning is in the area, when people are climbing on and off containers and equipment in ice and snow and heavy rain, you want to know when that's going to hit you. You want to know how long it's going to be there and when you can get back to work. And you want to communicate to your workforce how they can best protect themselves. As I had said, really, the challenge is turning data into actionable information and then having the ability to manage and track those actions taken and the impact afterwards. This really separates companies from those who just have access to raw information. You know, reports, as Bob has said, are complex operations with a network of stakeholders that have differing roles to play in the movement and operation of vessels, equipment, trucks, trains, as well as significant personnel. And they all have different requirements and planning for managing weather events. Weather applications exist today in various uh, locations, online and with apps, but how do we get consistent, timely, and accurate information on a platform that allows for proactive action and communication across the stakeholder community like you've spoken to, Chris? Um, I'm sure we've all experienced the direct impact of severe weather in our careers. I know I have from a vessel perspective, both container and cruise ships. I've had a cruise ship get hit by a 75 foot rogue wave. Um, I've had container ships lose a number of containers overboard in heavy, heavy seas. Um, you know, proper preparation can make the difference in prevention of losses. And I don't have to remind the people on this call how much capital is invested in container handling equipment with ship to shore cranes today being, you know, in the $12 million range for an individual crane that you certainly don't want to have break loose during a significant uh, weather event. Um, so those losses can really be significant to the bottom line. Safety, efficiency, and cargo velocity are imperatives in today's supply chain. Weather can have serious impacts on these uh, and, and cause delays, damage, and injury. And we saw from the Suez and the buildup of, of ships how much just a little bit of delay can disrupt the global supply chain and, and cause ports to get backed up. So having the right access to information and then tying that to specific actions from a dynamic user-friendly platform like tomorrow.io really offers, I think, this community a unique opportunity. And with that, I know we, we, we have a few questions that, um, that have been forwarded that we'd like to briefly discuss with the panel. And then I think, Bob, you may open it up to a broader discussion. But one of the first questions was, can you share an example of how you've adjusted labor around uh, weather events? And I can tell you from the client that uh, tomorrow and I worked collectively with, 
in North America, um, they were able to, uh, in some cases, accelerate or delay the hiring of labor around significant events like hail, extreme wind, um, heavy precipitation, both snow and rain, and avoid having to pay for, uh, for downtime. And, um, you know, Bob, you may have experienced some of those same things too, if you want to comment. That's exactly right. And I was thinking of a couple of things that apply here. We have we, we can testify on the, the value of knowing uh, both when the short term and the, and the uh, duration of the events are going to happen uh, by tomorrow.io's software solution. Uh, the things like uh, is we know there's we can know there's lightning in the area, but knowing that it happened is a lot different than knowing as we can today of when it's going to happen and the path it's following. There are situations where we can, we've been able to continue onward uh, with our operations and work because we knew we weren't in the path of certain events that were happening. And while we were in proximity, uh, there's a high confidence level uh, because of the huge amount of data that we know that tomorrow processes, we get down to within a 10 or 15 minute of ability to go back to work. and. For my guys, it's just, it, it's an incredible <laughs> per hourly rate, let alone a day rate uh, for those folks coming in and off of those vessels. So yeah, I, I've felt that pain and reality of it. And we've seen uh, in my previous life, you know, having hands show up uh, for tenants within the port. And I grew up in Port Freeport where we're doing, you know, serious hand labor even today and you can maximize the folks that are coming down to the docks and give that type of advice if you've got this tool within your toolkit as the port operator uh, and it brings everyone together. So you're not just let, held out there waiting for the Coast Guard to make a go, no go. You have some intel that you've been able to back up on your own. You're able to collaborate with the pilots on a, on a phenomenally uh, much more integrated level. So. Uh, I, I back up what you're referring to there, Bill. Thanks, Bob. And the second question is, what kind of impacts have you seen related to a severe weather event? And, and I mentioned a couple from the vessel side, but on the container terminal and intermodal terminal side, I've certainly experienced container blowovers when containers have been stacked high. Uh, that's empties and even loads, so you've got cargo loss as well. Uh, I've seen crane movement and container handling equipment movement where there's been impact and damage to uh, to cranes and even a crane uh, hit a vessel house uh, because it wasn't properly tied down and they didn't uh, possibly think the, that the wind was coming as fast as it was. Hail damage to uh, to, to automobiles, uh, lightning delays and, and problems uh, with personnel uh, and you know, having uh, uh, vessels have to certainly steer around weather and sometimes uh, be delayed getting into port. We know what that's like in places like New Orleans and in Savannah where you're dealing with with um, um, inland uh, fog and so forth. So um, there is a lot out there that, that we need to protect. And, and I think that again, having the, the right information is important. But Chris, one for you, uh, how is the Tomorrow IO weather platform different from other apps that are available? You talked about it a little bit, but for example, can it be used to communicate certain events and, and details with customers and stakeholders? Yes. Yeah, so, so, Bill, the short answer there is, is yes. Um, certainly have a, a communication channel directly through our through our platform. Um, to answer hitting on that question, you know, when I think of, you know, the, our biggest differentiator is, you know, yes, we are the only weather intelligence platform out there, but how is that helping us? You know, how is that helping our customers? And that's enabling them, giving them the confidence to make those decisions, right? So traditional weather providers out there, um, you know, might say, hey, we got strong winds or we see the, the, the wind waves or this particular height. What we want to do is we want to work with the operators, the safety folks at the ports, figuring out, well, what actions do they take? Uh, I think uh, Bill and Bobby brought up 
lightning, right? So, all right, if lightning is within a certain amount of radius of the port, well, then we want to, you know, shelter our, our employees, right? Get them out of harm's way. So we really want to enable all of our customers to make those decisions more confidently, which ultimately will, you know, number one, again, keep their employees safe, and number two, um, keep their operations flowing smoothly. Yeah, I've got, I, I want to pick up on something that both of you have said. You, you keep referring to a, a somewhat of a standard response guide, and in, uh, in our world, it's very, very important to have a pre-planned response, so a threshold. And I know that when we're going out uh, from port to work on a vessel, you know, we have a min-max on what we're, we're going to let our people go out on because there are ambitious pilots out there, there are ambitious uh, uh, vessel operators that are willing to give us a ride, and we have our own set of thresholds, and we, we draw on uh, tomorrow.io's uh, wave height, you know, and then you have the whole visibility thing, which isn't always fog. It, you know, it, it can be a variety of, of visibility issues, but uh, this, this whole idea of having a, uh, a, a standardized response guide. Bill, what have what have you seen in the past on, you know, I'm sure everyone has a, a, someone at the port responsible to, to make those high level decisions, but there's got to be a series of things in place that's somewhat of a standing mantra. What do you, what have you seen in your experience? No, Bob, thanks. I, I think as you said, you know, many companies, if not most, you know, have some kind of a response guide or a playbook in place. But what I see is that that doesn't always translate to specific action. And what I've seen with the Tomorrow IO platform and specifically experienced with a client was the insights and the inside library that, that the platform has, taking those actions and being able to tie them specifically into weather alerts so that when a location gets an alert and knows that something is coming, they've got a checklist that they can actually follow on what actions do I need to take with who and when. And then management has a way to go back and see if those actions were actually taken. And then you can do a postmortem to see, you know, what did we prevent? And what was the impact of that weather event? How can we learn from that? So I think the uniqueness of their platform, and it's always evolving. I know their team is working on making this even more dynamic, but having that instant access to the actions, not having to go to a book on the shelf, I think makes a big difference, Bob. Yeah, yeah, it's big, it's big. Well. Uh, I, I know we committed to keeping this webinar informative, but within a time frame, everybody could get back to work on in the afternoon. Uh, any other questions have come through yet, Bill? Is there any uh, any others? I mean, we're happy to take uh, follow up calls and, and invest the time for any of the participants that want to have a, a personal meeting and you know work with Chris on you know, how does this integrate? How do we bring our standard playbook into this for the thresholds? Uh, I mean, Nearshore Networks has their own, as I alluded to, it, and it has to do with uh, keeping the personnel safe and, and yet being ac accessible to the vessels. Uh, I know uh, we've seen and we've been a part of those communities when we talk about uh, vessels crossing bays and is it go, is it no go, you know, uh, how do we work best with the community? Because uh, uh, obviously some of these attendees that I, I see your profiles, these are not small ports. You know, they're, they're, they're significant real estate, a variety of uh, intermodal, you know, transport, even, you know, borderline on, on air terminals adjacent. So uh, I know you guys would be open to that. Do we have any other that have come through, Bill, or? Uh, we, I think I think we're good. I, maybe Paul will touch on it, but I would assume that if anybody has a specific question that we can't handle now, they could send it through to uh, to AAPA and maybe to Paula or to yourself, Bob. And then we would, uh, as you said, we'd be happy to get back to everybody and give them more detail. 
Well, let me let me thank you for investing time with us, Bill. I mean, it's a great experience level that you bring to this and, and bring real life to it. Chris, thank you for giving the overview on, on the weather. We, we've found it to be very informative. And as you know, as a result of investigating all the tools that are out there, uh, we landed on this because we're global, uh, but I believe this has a significant local impact and my guys benefit from it every time they go. It's the last point they check before heading out. So uh, thank you both for being so informative on it. And Paula, let me turn it back over to you and thank the AAPA for you know, allowing us to set ourselves out there to share what we find. And we'll try to bring informative uh, opportunities like this to share with the membership as we come across them. It's, we've got a team that does nothing but look into forward technology, not only in communications, but how it affects our fleet customers and, and our, our members of the community and the ports. Sounds good, Bob. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, uh, Bob, Chris, and Bill for this very insightful presentation. Uh, I hope all of the attendees feel like you gained some helpful insights. Um, and before you sign off, I hope you'll hang in there for just a few more minutes so I can share some okay. upcoming events and promotions that we have uh, here at AAPA that I think may interest you. So let me just share my screen real quick. Um, let's see. I'm gonna see if I can make myself the presenter here. I think I can do that for you. There you go. How okay. about that? Did there that work? Go. Yes, it did. Thank you so much. All right. You guys should be seeing my screen here. We so, do, yes. Great, thank you. So um, hopefully uh, ho hold your um, calendars for our next member hosted webinar, which will be hosted by Industrial Defender. That'll be on June 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, the title and description are coming soon, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, more to come and an invitation will be coming shortly. And as Bob mentioned, um, we will be holding our annual convention in Austin, Texas from September 26th through the 29th. We are looking forward to holding that in person and seeing everyone face to face. We are um, very encouraged by the fact that so many people have been getting their vaccines and um, live events have been resuming and um, the, in the events uh, space. So um, looking forward to seeing people in person for that. We've been getting exhibitors signed up. I think Nearshore Networks has a booth um, reserved already, don't you, Bob? Yes, ma'am, we do. We'll be front and center and hope everyone that uh, attended today will stop in and see if I can corral my cohorts, Chris and possibly Bill. We may have them that they're handing out candy as well. That's awesome, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so we've got exhibitors signed up. We have several ports have already reserved um, re their registrations. So people are signing up for the event. So, uh, you know, don't uh, don't feel, uh, you know, hesitant about signing up. Um, we've got uh, registrations open and um, we've got booths available for anybody who's um, wanting to exhibit and hotels um, reservations are available as well. So. Um, the website for that is aapaaustin2021.org. And then we also have several other events um, that are planned for this year. Um, our cruise seminar is in June, and that'll be um, held virtually. Our marine terminal management training is in June, June 28th through the 30th, and that is in person. Uh, I think that's in Miami. The Port Security Seminar and Expo is being held in person um, in New York, um, July 14th through the 16th. But um, I believe there's also a virtual option for that too, for anybody who isn't quite um, comfortable or isn't able to attend that in person, there is a virtual option for that as well. Um, the Facilities Engineering Seminar and Expo is taking place in November from the 2nd to the 4th in Savannah, Georgia. Um, and I believe that will also have a virtual component, again, for anybody who isn't comfortable or able to travel. Um, the Executive Management Conference is November 15th through the 19th in person. The Commissioner Seminar is in December 7th through the 9th. And then our Latin American Congress of Ports is um, scheduled for November to December in Cartagena, Colombia. So um, we are excited to be resuming events in person so that people can network 
and see each other face to face. There's nothing like that face to face connection. And then also PMA or AAPA is excited to announce um, our Lighthouse Awards. It's a new brand, not a new awards. We've been doing annual awards, but we are um, rebranding them this year. Um, the categories for the awards are the same as they have been. We have um, awards for communications, environmental improvement, facilities engineering, and information technology. And the deadline to apply for that is June 1st. And um, these awards are presented at the annual convention. There is an application to apply, and they're $125 per application. You must be a member, and you must be a port member to apply. Um, that said, if you are perhaps an industry solution provider or a service, um, supply chain partner who has worked with a port member on a communications project in 2020 or environmental um, in improvement project or a facilities engineering project, um, you may work with uh, um, your port client um, in, to submit a application. So. Um, we're very excited to um, have this new brand for the awards. So um, just want to encourage um, members, make sure you're aware of those awards. Um, so please, um, you know, uh, 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 feel free to apply for those awards. We want to um, highlight uh, the work that our ports do, um, all the wonderful things that our ports are doing, uh, and just kind of get the word out there um, to, to the people at large. So thank you um, to everybody for your patience and your, your attention today. Uh, my name again, Paula Gonzalez. My contact information is here. If you're interested in um, any of AAPA's programs, if you're interested in, in membership, if you are not a member, um, if you would like to um, be able to host a webinar such as this one, um, re please reach out to me. Um, or if you're interested in any of the events that I mentioned, um, please reach out to me. I'm happy to um, to help out anybody in any way that I can. So thanks again today to our speakers, uh, Bill, Chris, and Bob. Very much appreciate your time today and to all of our attendees. Um, hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Take care. Thanks, Paula. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye, everyone.